Hey guys, today, instead of doing a devlog for resource packs like I normally do, I thought it would be interesting to do a narrated video where I show you the entire process of making an update to a resource pack, specifically my music player resource packs, Music Plus and Music Player UI Lite. This will also be a great excuse to show off some more UI coding stuff, because I know I still haven't done that tutorial and it's been over a year since the first one, so I gotta give you something, and this can maybe count as that. Now, the first part of this update actually is not going to be updating Music Plus, but updating Marketplace Hider, because for some reason, seeing those animated buttons on the main menu screen is really distracting to me, and I hate when I have to go and fix my skin in the skin menu and then I see the advertisements covering it. So the first thing I did today was just spend an hour going through the Marketplace Hider, and boom, it's fixed. And this video is not going to be uncut, by the way. I am going to cut between stuff, but every time I do something major, that's going to get shown. Or at least the first time it will. I don't want you to miss on the important stuff. So the first step in making a resource pack is actually getting to the files. And how do you do that? Well, it's not set up very obviously for you to get to unless you've already set up a shortcut like me. So I have shortcuts to jump straight to my resource packs or to jump to the resource pack folders which I've given very stupid names, but you won't have these set up at first, so how do you get there? Well, it's kind of like Minecraft Java. You hit Windows R, which pulls up the run command. You type in percent app data percent enter, and then that brings you to your name, which is censored in the video, app data roaming. Go up one to app data, hit local, scroll down until you see packages, double click that, and now you've got the files for all of your universal Windows apps in here, including Minecraft. Now, Minecraft UWP is the release version, and Minecraft Windows Beta is the preview. So we're going to do it in the release version because I'm developing for release first. Here's a bunch of random folders. The only one you need to worry about is local state. Then games, com.mojang. And here we are. Now we're in the com.mojang file with resource packs, and you've made it to your resource packs. Once you're here, pick the ones that you want to have shortcuts to, like say, Music Plus, right click, send to desktop, and now you have a shortcut that you can move anywhere. This will save you a lot of time in the future so that you don't have to do all that navigation every time. Now that we've got our pack files and the game open, we can actually start working on things, but before we do, we're going to move our resource pack from the resource packs folder I'm going to move Music Player 2, because it's also being updated, into Development Resource Packs. The Development Resource Packs folder is good because it's always scanning for new files. So if you add a new texture in a Development Resource Pack, the game will find it immediately. If you try to do that in a normal Resource Packs folder, then you have to reload the game to actually get it to detect new files. With our pack ready, the first thing I always do is check my contributions. So through Twitter, and Discord, actually, a lot of people like to send me little files to add. Now, I'm not going to show you all my DMs, but this person was very kind and sent me a French translation for Music Plus. So we're going to download this and implement it into the pack, adding credit for this person. I typically like to open a second file explorer so that I can move things between two places at once, which is saves a lot of time <laughs> that you would not realize. Now, I just closed that browser page, but I do need to credit this person, so I shouldn't do that quite yet. Now, we've got all our files here, so we're going to copy the contribution file right into the pack directly. Then, edit with Notepad++, and now we just got to check things through. So this mostly looks perfectly fine. The only thing I'm seeing is that there's some weird capitalization here. Not here, but lower down. Here it is, at the albums. See, these albums aren't quite capitalized consistently, so I'm just going to make it consistent. I am I do not know French, just so you know. So this is a guess, but I assume it has the same capitalization rules as English. With the capitalization fixed, there's just one more thing for me to add, which I do to every contribution file in every resource pack, and that's give credit within the file. So we're going to copy the example from Nettingus NG in the Java aspects pack, and use this exact same way to credit in Music Plus. Naturally, we've got to change the person we're crediting, though, because we don't want to credit Nettingus for a French translation he did not do. So we're going to credit Moy instead 
by grabbing, okay, Twitter doesn't want me to grab that name, I guess, by grabbing the handle, pasting it there, and then we're going to grab the name, too. That's all we needed to do. Perfect. Now French translations are in the pack. Similarly, I have translations from Netengus. Now Netengus gave me a file for both Music Plus and Music Player UI Lite, so that's more convenient, but whatever. So all we gotta do is add credit for him from Java Aspects once again, because I like to keep the way I document my packs consistent across all the packs. Everywhere you'll find the same stuff. And that extends to Music Plus. Now that we've added those two new files to the pack, I think it's about time that we started a new change log. So I always copy the little divider, put it at the top, add a temporary name, because I can't think of things easily. And this is going to be 3.2.0. Released, uh, hopefully today, so we'll put June 28th, 2022. We're going to leave this note that goes in all of the lists because I don't want people deleting all their custom songs by accident. So here we are, added Mexican Spanish and France French translations, thanks at Netengus NG and at Moy, bunch of numbers. I like to keep the change log going as I make the updates so that I don't forget anything. It has happened in the past that I've forgotten features because I haven't put them on the change log as I've created the update, and I don't want that to ever happen again. So now that the contributions have been merged with the pack, it's time to add the rest of the update features, which is going to be the wild update, because they added four new songs in this update, and one got added to the files that was not previously. So the first thing we got to do now is actually update our default resources. They're out of date. So finding the default resources for Bedrock Edition is not an easy task, but don't worry, I've got it down. We got to go to our main drive. Program files. Make sure that hidden items is checked. Windows apps. Scroll down to Microsoft.Minecraft UWP. That's the one. Data. And I'm actually going to grab from the preview because preview is more updated. Data. Resource packs. And then we got to grab vanilla. The most recent files. And that should be all we need right now because we're not updating anything else. Now we're going to head to my vanilla resources folder. It's very nice to have this, just a place to keep everything, and update these two folders that I copied. For some reason, the developers started segmenting their features every update after 1.13. So I say 1.13 is a repackage, and it also includes all the sounds and UI files. Then everything else after it is just the version number. Since we're working with UI files in the music player, we do need the most recent UI files, which is why you always update the repackage that includes the sounds and UI. Speaking of, there is one more that we should have copied, I just realized, and that is vanilla music, because we need to see what songs are included and what their file paths are. Now we have the vanilla song list from the newest update, which includes stuff like Labyrinthine, Firebugs, Airy, Ancestry, and also five, which is going to be in the records folder. So these are all things that we're going to have to reference within our own pack. So I got to explain a little thing about Music Plus here. Music Plus has 10 sub packs. Each sub pack has its own music definitions and sound definitions.json. Because of this, I have to choose one to update every update. So I include the default, which is dimension-based music includes extra songs. So this is the one that we're going to use for everything, and then we're going to copy the files to the other ones later. Now what we want to figure out is if I no longer need to include Ancestry in the pack, which, spoiler alert, I don't. It's 5 minutes 43 seconds long, that's a whole 17 megabytes we would save if we delete this file. So if we head to Music Plus, Sounds, Music, Game, if Ancestry is in this file, which it is, it shares the same file name, so it shares the same file path, so we can just delete it from Music Plus and save 17 megabytes every time. Actually, that was 6 megabytes because Java has it a lot more compressed. Now we're going to add that to the change log. All the other songs in 1.19 were completely new, so we don't need to worry about removing them or anything. Now, every song in Music Plus has its own sound definition. This is to allow command users to play whatever song they want at any time. However, it does mean that we gotta update it every update, so we better get started. Let's start after the Caves and Cliffs music, 
which ends with an ordinary day. And for reference, I'm going to use the Spotify of the songs to figure out the order. It looks like the official soundtrack goes Firebugs, Airy, Labyrinthine, Five. So we're going to list them in that order. Whenever I add a new song, I always copy an old song and paste it, and then I change the relevant information. So instead of an ordinary day, we're going to have Firebugs, and we're going to navigate to Firebugs. <laughs> Pretty simple for the songs that actually use their name, but it's a lot more difficult with something like Calm 1, where you have to figure out which song that is. Let's also do that with Airy, Labyrinthine, and 5 is an interesting case, because I have some other numbered music discs in here too, and it looks like I add two entries, so you can either play it with the words spelled out or the numbers and you'll still get the song. So that's what we're going to do with 5. Perfect! Now we can play the new 1.19 songs from commands. And if you're wondering about Ancestry, well, it's already in here because I added it in the previous Music Plus update. A big part of Music Plus is documentation of all the new command features. So here we are going to add those wild update songs into the command list. There, the new sound events are added so anyone can learn how to play them. It also happens that Music Plus includes albums to play if you want a random song from a certain group. And there are a few groups in here, well specifically one group in here, that we need to pay attention to. Because 1.19 added 5, a new music disc, so we have to add 5 to the music disc album. For this we're going to copy the sound event object, and then find the album, and then we just add it at the end, right after Other Side. I had to do the same process for Other Side and Pig Step after they were added. There are three different ways you can play the same album, so we want to make sure it's included in all three. And that is it. We've now updated the existing albums to include the new songs. But there's still one thing we gotta do, and that is add a new album. Because every update that there are new songs, they have a new album associated with them, and the wild update is no different. So we will be copying a previous album, paste it right after, and name it a new thing. We're going to call it just album.wildupdate. Simple, easy, understandable. I could also put mild update if I'm that salty. So now we need to include all the songs again. New album has been added, so we got to add it in the relevant place in the command list right here, album.wildupdate. We can also do album.volume if we want to use the volume naming scheme that the other updates have included, so we gotta copy it and make it album.volumewild. Give people options. People like options in resource packs. There's no reason not to. That concludes all the commands that we had to update, so now we're going to update the music player part of this document, which I have a comment here that straight up just says past this point are the sound events for the music player, because it is. This is essentially the exact same process as before, but we don't have any redundant sound events because these are only the ones used in the UI. You're never actually meant to play these with commands. It is much quicker, however, to actually copy the old sound events and paste them directly into the UI section, then make the adjustments afterward, because otherwise you're just going to be completing the same work twice, which is never fun. But if we want to do this all quickly, we could probably do this quicker by hand because there are not that many songs here. But a lot of the times you'll have 10 songs at once and you don't want to add .ui to every song name and change the category to UI for every single one. So here's what we're going to do instead. Highlight, Control H, quote, colon, space, open. If you can't tell what I'm doing, I'll explain shortly. <laughs> slash r slash n we're going to put six spaces quote category end quote colon space colon music and now we're going to change this so that it finds it adds dot ui and it changes music to ui essentially what we're doing is we're finding everything from the end of the song name until the end of the category name in this grouping here and replacing it with UI relevant ones. Instantly we've converted them all to UI. It takes a while to type out, but slash r slash n in case you don't know is how you put new lines into find and replace. So if you do slash r slash n and you have extended enabled, that is a new line. 
just like all the individual song events, we have to add the new album to the UI because albums are also included in the UI of the music player. And that one is a lot easier to add because it's just one big sound event. But let's not forget, we still have to update the sound event for the music discs below too to make it match. The last thing for us to do in this sound definitions is actually make it specific to the sub pack because past this point, all sound definitions are the same. So everything we just did, I'm going to copy and paste into all the other... Actually, wait, hold on. There is one final thing we must do now, and it is copy and paste this sound event. Now this sound event is odd probably to you. It looks exactly the same as the vanilla sound events, and it's not listed in the command list. So why is it here? Well, this is why it's here, max distance, because music plus makes music discs go a long, long way. Normally, you can only hear them from 64 blocks away. With Music Plus, whew, you can hear them 250 blocks away. So we gotta make sure five is the same way. Now we've completed everything past this comment right here, which says all sound definitions are the same. So we're going to copy and paste this into every sound definitions. Keyboard shortcuts are very nice for this. We're going to hold Control, Shift, and then the End key, and we've just selected the entire document past that point. Hit Control c to copy, save, close. Now we're going to pull up all the other sound definitions, which should be about 10 files. That's fun. Open them all at once, and now we start pasting. We're going to do the exact same select as before, but Control v this time, so that we put the new stuff in. Boom! We've updated all of the sound definitions to have the new file, so now no matter what sub pack you're using, you can play the wild update songs with commands. Let's add this new information to the change log. So, got a lot to add here. We only list one sound event in the change log to keep it simple, but if they try volume wild, it will also work. We gotta say that we updated the Music Discs album to include five, which I'm going to spell out because writing a number seems like I just forgot to finish the sentence. Now that we've added our new features to the change log, by the way, the file name is just a thing you always expect, it doesn't go into the change log because playing the songs with commands is just a feature of the pack, it's normal. Now it's time to update every sound definition's specific part. Now there are 10 different files here, and they all have slightly different ways that they play in game, so we've got to make sure to update their parts accordingly. Now old music only, is lucky because it only uses C418 music, so we're just gonna ignore that one completely. Terrain-based music includes extra songs. So this one we've gotta add a new sound event for swamps. Essentially, this subpack chooses the music more selectively than the main one, which just throws all the dimension music into one playlist. In this subpack, it will play according to biome. This is a point where referring to the default resources will be very nice because we need to figure out first what categories we're even selecting for. So here are the new sound events added in 1.19. Deep Dark, Swampland, Swampland Mutated, Mangrove Swamp, Bamboo Jungle, Jungle Hills. So basically, it's forests and swamps and mesas. Mesas seem kind of out of place here. So here's how we're going to do it. We're going to add all of these sound events to our existing musicdefinitions.json in Music Plus. This is going to be a challenge, and it's probably going to be very annoying and take a long time. But it will be worth it, because then we can make informed decisions about sound definitions. For now, let's close the sound definitions files and open the music definitions files. So here's how we have it right now. The files on the right are the old music plus music definitions. The file on the left is the new 1.19 sound events that we need to merge because we need to cover all of them in music plus. And we're going to need to do this 10 times, so it's going to take a while. I'll just do it once. So here's the old music only sub pack. Once again, this is going to ignore all the Lena Rain music because it's just the music from before 1.13. So it's pretty easy to solve. We're just going to copy all of these sound events. First off, we want to make the spacing equal, so instead of spacing it four times, we're going to space it twice. There we go. And then we want to start copying them and paste them in where it makes sense. It may not look like it, but there is a vague order in this file that I like to follow. We go 
game at the very top because that is the general one if there is not another sound event taking over. Water is right below it because that plays in any biome underwater. Then we have all the biome specific events which are listed alphabetically. Then we have creative because it's only in creative mode. Then we have end, nether, the specific nether biome music, then credits and menu, i.e. the menu music. We always want to change the event to music.game and then music plus plays music constantly instead of every once in a while, so we want to change the min and max delay to 3. Now we've just got to repeat this process with, with every single music event in all 10 definitions. I'll get back to you. So here's how it turned out. We are incredibly lucky because all of the biome specific events that are new are grouped pretty close to each other. So we have birch forest to deep dark, then flower forest and forest, then all the jungles, then mangrove swamp is by itself, which is kind of lame. But then we have everything from mega taiga down to roofed forest, and then we just got the swamps. So that's not too bad compared to what it could be if we had to paste them between every single one. The music definitions file is quite large now with all the biomes it has in here. It's 208 lines long, so as long as all of these are 208 lines long at the end, we'll know that we got all of the music events added correctly. We can close the new one now. Now this is where we really have to start thinking about things. 1.19 added four new ambient music tracks, so we don't have to worry about five, but it's three swamp tracks? and a scary ambient track for the deep dark. That's really the hardest one for me to figure out what to do with, because just Ancestry playing forever on loop would be very annoying, but you also don't want to ruin the mood of the deep dark by just playing normal songs. So that one we're gonna have to keep thinking about. I'm gonna give it its own sound event though, because I don't know what to do with it. Music.deepdark. Then, otherwise, we'll just use cave for the other cave biomes, which is already established. And then the last thing we've got to figure out is the swamp music. Now, the swamp music is mostly calm. It's got a little upbeat at the end. So I think it does fit for all forests or woods or swamps, even if it's called like firebugs. So I think... We shouldn't do all the forests. There's a lot of forest in Minecraft and we want these songs to feel special, so we'll put them in the weird places. For starters, Mesa, no. Mesa's just gonna get ignored. How about we put the woods, we'll just say woods or wooded. We'll put it in, not roofed forests actually, swamps for sure, mega taigas, and redwood taigas, because they are special and they're huge and they make sense with the wonder that wooded songs kind of have, and that calmness. There's nothing crazy going on in that biome. So swamps and mega taigas, does that feel like enough? How about jungles as well? Jungles, mega taigas, swamps. I think that's fair. And then all the other forests will use the default game music. This is only for the terrain-based mode, if you're wondering. So now that all of the music definitions have been updated, we can move back to the sound definitions and figure out just what we need for each one. So we're going to find the music definitions for terrain-based music, which looks like this. Essentially, this is the only one that I really showed before. We got the wooded music, mountain music, cave music, and deep dark. Everything else just uses game. So for starters, should we update game in here? Probably not, because we include the creative menu and survival music in it, as well as two extra songs. Well, a few more than two extra songs. Then we got the cave music has some of our otter songs as well as half of the songs from Caves and Cliffs and a song from Minecraft Earth. Then the mountains have our winter songs as well as the other half of the songs from the wild update and sprouting. First thing we gotta do is remove ancestry from, well no, okay let's only have ancestry play in the deep dark. Now we will add a new list called wooded and these are our wooded songs that we decided earlier. So all of the new songs, naturally. Firebugs, <laughs> not anymore. Airy and Labyrinthine. Now, there are also a few extra songs added in this pack that are not typically in Minecraft, and I'm considering moving some of them to the forest as well, because we don't need all of them 
on these pre-existing ones. For example, we could definitely move the Minecraft Earth song Sprouting to the forest and it would make more sense. So let's do that. We're going to take Sprouting and put it there instead. And the droopy songs are quite upbeat for Minecraft songs, so we don't want them to ruin the atmosphere of the swamp, so I won't put them in the swamp. But they would work well in a forest, so maybe we should separate forest and swamp music. But we don't want them to get too repetitive, do we? See, this is the trouble with making a pack like this. I have to make all these decisions about where the music should play, and it's a lot of pressure. Okay, we are going to move Nuance 3 and 4 into the new wooded playlist. We're also going to move Droopy 1 into the forest, just to give it a little bit more variety, because we don't want the songs to get repetitive once again. I believe that's a good track list right there for forests and swamps. Now all we gotta do is add them to the existing creative playlist, because the creative playlist includes every song, not just the songs from one biome or the other, or survival or creative, no. It is every song from every biome all at once. Why did I copy Droopy? Last thing we gotta do is figure out how to solve our issues with the deep dark. We need some deep dark music and we need to include at least Ancestry, but we need it to not be just Ancestry. <laughs> do you see the problem here? We could make Deep Dark the only song that doesn't play constantly, but silence. Would Minecraft Earth's song Earth fit well in Cave? It's too upbeat for the Deep Dark still. Nether 5 fits pretty well as the Deep Dark song, but it's still too upbeat and loud. Okay, here's what I've settled on. We're going to not play music constantly in the Deep Dark. Sometimes silence is better. And then when we do play songs, there is a 1 in 6 chance that it plays the song Death, which was currently unused in Music Plus until now. It's essentially the little ambient track that's kind of like Five, where you hear a player sneaking around in grass and shooting a chicken, and I think that kind of thing would work well in the creepy environment of the deep dark. That's the solution. Now we gotta head back to that music definitions and actually patch it up. So after a song plays in the deep dark, it will wait at least 300 to 800 units before playing a song again. You spend a lot of time in there and you don't want to hear the same music constantly. This is the only time that Music Plus is not going to be playing music constantly, which is a weird break for me to make, but I think it's kind of necessary so that players don't hate the music down there. And now, for the no extra songs version of Terrain Based, it's just not going to be as good because I have used the extra songs to add ambience instead of taking anything away. But, whatever, the wooded will definitely suffer the most because of this. The forests really need a variety of music since there's so many in the game, you'll be spending a lot of your time in jungles especially, so hearing just these three songs will get tiring for some people. This is why I advise you to use the one I've actually used all the songs in, which is includes extra songs instead of no extra songs. But I know it's a preference thing. Terrain-based music is probably the most difficult one to update because you can tell how hard I had to think about it. These other ones are going to be a lot easier. Total music mix? We literally just have to add all of the new file paths to the huge list of every single song in the game and we're good. For dimension-based music, I just throw the relevant chunk of <laughs> songs into the dimension that it plays in and that's all I have to do. So that one's done. Same for Custom music is even easier because it's already done, because I never need to update that, so that one just gets closed instantly. Dimension based with no extra songs is basically the same, I just have to remember to also add Ancestry here, because I did not add it in the previous update since it was added by Music Plus and not by itself. With all that pain out of the way, we've now updated all the sound definitions and music definitions for 1.19. Now let's add all this stuff to the change log. So I need to specify for each sub pack what the changes are so that people know they don't apply to the entire pack. And we made a lot of changes in there, so let's hope I can remember all of them. We also shifted a few tracks around, so we gotta add those in here. So now comes the fun part. We've updated all of the songs and documentation and sub packs to work in 1.19, so it is time to do the UI stuff. 
Our first problem is that we have to address this. We are getting pack errors in the emote screen, so we have to figure out why they updated the emote screen, how it changed, well we don't need to know why they updated it, we just need to know how they updated it, and how we can update our own file to match. Once again, we're going to go to the 1.13 repackage of the UI files, and find the latest emote wheel screen. So on the right, we'll have emote wheel, the default, and the left will have our change. So what are the issues Minecraft is finding? It is seeing emote preview does not exist, this one. So let's find it. There is no emote image anymore. That would do it. So we got to find out what they did with it. It looks like the emote wheel itself has been moved into the persona common file. So that would be why it can't find any of these in this file anymore. So those are what it can't find. Emote image, emote image, emote image. Here's the persona common file. Let's see if we can find it now. There it is. So we got emote image, empty, preview, and hopefully valid too, right? Yes, so we've got everything in here. So all we need to do is remove these controls from the emote wheel screen file and put them into a new persona common.json file. For this, we're just going to right click new text document. Really, you could click any, it doesn't matter. Persona common.json. Boom. And now we just got to make it actually work as JSON, which means opening brackets, closing brackets. There's a name for that. It's not bracket. I can't remember what it is right now. A brace. That's what it's called. A brace. So we need braces on both sides. With luck, this is all we need to change. So we'll just add our little tag to the top of the file, save it, and close it. Now we'll hit refresh. No errors were found. So we fixed that issue. Let's make sure it actually shows up in the emote wheel now, because that is important. If you can't see the music player, we're going to have some issues. Moment of truth. Okay, it's here. Sidebar still works. Still love the sidebar just as much. All the songs work. You can play them, stop them. Yep, looks good. We don't have custom music container on right now, but if we did, I'm sure it would be working fine. Once again, I'm not going to be modifying custom music container in this update because you don't need to modify custom music container in any update ever. What we should try is putting some emotes on. So let's equip the hammer as emote 1, uh, the wood punch as emote 3, and fake death as emote 6. So that should show up in our music player now, right? Uh-oh, the image doesn't. So now we got to find out where the image went. Probably because it got moved to Persona Common instead of Emote Wheel. I'm guessing if we just head into Music Player, which is the custom UI file I've got for the Music Player, which this file looks pretty scary, but I've got good comments in it, so don't worry, it's understandable. We just got to find out where the Emote image is used. So what we're going to do is follow the Emote trail. So we're just going to search for Emote. It looks like it's picking up a lot of my comments and the sidebar, so how about we just keep hitting it until we find something that seems good. Here's a sidebar toggle, here's a section. Let's go to the section. Boom, find next, just found another control, found another duplicate. There, it found the original object. So in this original object, we can trace it further to each individual button, which will have the template that includes the image. So we're going to search for that now. Here's the button base, and this looks like the base of our emote button. Obviously, I know this already, but I'm saying if you did it, you wouldn't know this already. So we need emote image panel. And here we are, emote render at persona.emoteImage. So persona is not right. We need to be searching for probably persona common. Reloading a world will reload the files in our resource pack already. So this is how we can see if it updated. There we are, we're back with the images as normal. So even though we had that little hiccup with the errors and them moving stuff around in the original game files, we fixed it. So now it works fine. And now, hopefully, with luck, we can emote from the music player. That's the important part. Now what we gotta do is add the new songs to the music player, because right now you can't actually play the 1.19 songs here. You can play Ancestry though, hopefully. Yes, you can hear it. So the music player is very easy to add songs to because I made it all modular. Everything looks pretty similar in this file. Like all the songs look about the same. They got identifier, duration, duration in seconds, sound event, and then section top or bottom if they're the top or bottom. Besides that, looks totally normal. 
Every single one follows the exact same template. All we have to do for the new section is add a new section, obviously. So we're going to find the Caves and Cliffs section, which it should be right here it is. We're going to copy the whole Caves and Cliffs section, and then we're going to paste it right after. This is going to be the Wild Update section. Now the Wild Update section, for starters, we're just going to find and replace all of the caves and cliffs with Wild Update. Easiest way to do it. Boom. Now we've fixed most of the stuff. We need to narrow it down to just four songs since there are only four songs added in this update. I'm going to leave Ancestry grouped with the Caves and Cliffs songs because it's in that album on Spotify and the album is what we're using for reference. Now we have to adjust all these songs to make sense with the Wild Update songs. So instead of Stand Tall, we need Firebugs, and then we'll copy, paste, paste, paste. Same for Airy, Labyrinthine. <laughs> Lena Rain's names for songs are just ridiculous. I mean, she's the same person who put the name as Chrysopeia. So I can't really complain about Labyrinthine. And then of course we need five. Now's the interesting part. See this duration in seconds? We need to make this match each individual song. Let's click on Firebugs, pause it right away. 512 looks like. The duration of each one is 512, which means it is 300 seconds, 312. Just some quick mental math on this. Labyrinthine is 524, so it's going to be 324. Aerie is 456, so it's going to be 296. And 5 is 258, which is going to be 178. Now what we got to do is add definitions for all of these identifiers in our language files. You see, we have the sound events already, but we do not have the definitions. We also need to remove this. Let's explain some things. Identifier is the name of the song, the title. Duration is how long the song lasts, but as you would see it written, like 511. Duration in seconds is used by the duration bar that appears when you click the button, and it determines how long that duration bar ticks down. It only takes the values in seconds, so that's why you have to convert it. And the sound event is the event to play when you press the button, which is going to be the song that we added in the sound definitions a while ago. We also need to add section bottom to the end of this. And the reason for these section top and section bottom things is to stop controllers from scrolling past the bottom. It makes it easier to navigate with a controller when the menus actually make sense. Now there are two English language files, one for British English and one for United States English, so we have to update both. I always do my work in the United States English file and then port it over to the Great Britain file afterward. So basically everywhere where we see a list with specific albums, we need to add a new album for Wild Update. So, for example, here, we see Nether Update, Caves and Cliffs, boom, Wild Update, and we have to make sure to change both the name after the equal sign and the translation key before the equal sign so that it will work when you use it in the UI file. We need to add an album. There is a new artist as of 1.19 who is Samuel Aberg. And since I don't know how to type that special A, I'm going to copy it from my own video, since that's the only way I know how to get this special letter. Previously, I copied it from the Minecraft website, so it's really just been a copy chain the whole way down. Let's copy that and put it into a new artist entry. So essentially, the way I've ordered the artist is just when were their songs added to the game. First C418, then Lena Rain, then Kumi Tanioka, now Samuel Aberg, and then these last two are from the other games, slash other songs, so like Calm 4 and the Minecraft Earth music. In the translation key, I'm not going to use the weird letters to keep things consistent, and we'll also have to add a combined name down here for the album for the Wild Update, because the Wild Update album was composed by both Lena Rain and Samuel Aberg. Lena Rain now has three crossover names, isn't that funny? With all that boring stuff done, now we can add the specific song information. Right after an ordinary day, we're going to have to put the four new songs. It's easiest to copy a generic one like this and then insert the information afterward. Firebugs, Airy, Labyrinthine. Did I get that spelled? I spelled that right, yes. Five. And then we got to add the durations. So that covers the name of the song, the duration of the song, and the artist of the song, which is everything we should need. So let me just... Oh wait, we didn't actually do the names of the song. 
Never mind, we are missing a very important part. To save some time, I'll copy the definitions from the previous section right here, and we can just control, find and replace duration with song. Boom. And we can also use some little regex with equals dot star with just equals to remove everything after the equal sign. Now we can type in the names without having to delete anything. It's very useful in longer lists, which we are going to go into later. And now we have to copy over the entries from the United States file into the Britain file to keep the two languages in parity. I mean, it's really one language in parity with itself. For larger sections like everything from the emote to the mixed artists, it's easier if we just copy and paste this entire thing and then do some finding and replacing those little line endings. So slash r slash n finds a new line and we want to replace every new line with a tab, a pound sign, and then another new line. So this will add the pound sign on every line ending. Then we've got to delete it in these little spaces because we don't actually want them there. Perfect. Now we have moved it over to both languages and we can close the language files because we're done over there. Now back in the JSON UI for the music player, see how it says ignored here? This is a holdover from when we copied the Caves and Cliffs files. For songs that aren't included in Music Plus by default, especially in volumes alpha and beta, you have to hide them if you're not playing with Music Plus. So say if you're using Music Player UI Lite, because then you won't have the files for the song and trying to press the button would just play nothing. So I hide the buttons. But all the code is always in this file. It's exactly the same on Music Plus and Music Player UI Lite. It's only the global variable of is Music Plus that is true or false. Now we gotta add a few last things, which is all these controls references that don't exist. Namely, Music Player Button Wild Update Bass and Music Player... Actually, no, the Wild Update title is covered, so it's only the button that we need to do. We'll need to find a source of a different button to copy how they do it. Here it is. This is the button section of the file, clearly. So, we'll just copy the good old Caves and Cliffs one, paste it right after, place Caves and Cliffs with wild update. This is a very common theme if you can't tell. Bada bing, bada boom. If we look down here, we're referencing another control that doesn't exist yet, so we're gonna have to add that one later. For now, let's fix this artist by, well actually Lena Rain is still correct, so we just need to make sure that the artist listed always matches the update. The only one that doesn't have an artist listed is Other, because there are only two songs in Other and they're written by different people. Now let's follow to the cover section where we'll add a corresponding cover for the Wild Update. We're just going to do the same thing with Caves and Cliffs and replace it with the Wild Update cover. If you notice here, this is actually referring to another control, but this control does exist because it's a general base control that all covers are based on. So all we need to do now is add this file, Textures UI Cover Wild Update and then we'll have covered all our bases, get it? So we'll need to go and grab the cover from Spotify. I can't remember exactly how I did this for the previous version. I used this menu somehow to uh, grab the photo out of, it doesn't let you right click save on it because it Spotify overrides it, but we can do this to manually find the graphic for it. Here we are, see how it's slowly moving that little selection closer to the image. That's what we need. There it is, image class that. Now we just need to actually get the image. So we need to just double click on source, copy all that, paste the link, delete, delete, boom. We got the wild update cover in high quality. <laughs> I'm sure there was an easier way to do that, but for now, this is all we need. So all the covers in Music Plus are 128 by 128 and the cover we downloaded is 192 by 192 so we're going to resize it using best quality down to 128 by 128. It may look like crap on this huge screen but it's tiny in the game so even 128 by 128 is honestly overkill. Now while we're here we should try to grab the image for the Caves and Cliffs soundtrack too. It's been updated since I last released an update of Music Plus, and it looks a lot nicer now. Here we are, image, source. That was a lot easier than the first time. And here it is much bigger. We're gonna copy it directly into paint.net to save ourselves some time. Crop, resize, 192, enter. Control save as, and then that's going to replace the old Caves and Cliffs cover. So in theory, everything now is complete. 
In practice, things are usually not complete that easily. Something will go wrong. So for example, I just remembered that I forgot to do all of the album updates. To demonstrate, there is an album in the sidebar. The album section is controlled by the album section element. We're going to copy the caves and cliffs element once more. Then we're going to do the good old find and replace caves and cliffs with wild update in selection. There we are. Song count is going to change though, because there are only four songs in the wild update, not ten. We got to change the artist to match our new combined one, which is Samuel Aberg. And I'm sorry if I'm slaughtering that name. I probably am. And finally, we got to remove this variable. So this variable is used by music player UI Lite. If you don't have the bonus songs installed, it will play a different sound event that does not include Ancestry, because in previous versions, Ancestry was not included in the default files. This is no longer necessary, because Ancestry is now included in the default files. So we can actually delete that from both Caves and Cliffs and Wild Update with no issues. We do have to go through all the old sound definitions now and update them after a little bit, because first we need to finish our work in here. So if we go to the Play Music Player Stack Panel element, this is the one that's used when you disable the sidebar, and it's the easiest to add new sections to. All we have to do is copy the old one, paste it after, and rename it to match. The more challenging one is the sidebar version, because the sidebar version of the music player has a duplicate section each time, and toggles, and lots and lots of fancy things. Fortunately, we can also just copy this. The person who made the sidebar code it was very smart and made it all modular and copyable in, to infinity and beyond, so it's very easy to add more things to it later. Now we have to add the toggle that will decide whether or not to show the groups that we added before. I'm sorry if this is a little confusing. I understand. It's not easy to understand. I know. It is quite confusing. There's no easy way to explain everything at once. What I'm doing right now is updating the toggle group forced indexes, which is the special number used by every toggle in a UI screen. Each toggle has its own number to keep them all unique. And since I added something in the middle of a list, I've got to go through everything after it and make sure it all makes sense. Perfect. That should be everything we have to do for real besides updating those sound definitions again, which I will do now. As of now, I have updated everything that should be required to get this working. So we'll see if it works or not in game right now. Here we are. Oh, oh, I see the new button. It says wild update instead of something broken. And it pulls up the wild update songs. Awesome. Caves and Cliffs seems to still be working with a much nicer album cover, if I do say so myself. And do the durations of the songs all line up? They don't need to line up, they just need to be not exactly the same. Looks like they all line up so far. I'm gonna call that good enough. And then in albums, we just have to make sure that the album is here. It is here. We got that special character that I worked so hard to copy. Got all four songs listed. Does it work? Yes, it works. It works, everything worked first try. That's suspicious. I must say, it's quite convenient for a tutorial video like this where everything works nice, because that doesn't happen a lot. Now what we gotta do is something very boring. We gotta test every single sub pack and make sure that all of their sound definitions are in fact correctly formatted. So the only way to easily do this is to play a sound that is added by the pack. I'm gonna pick the most obnoxious song I know to test this. So now we just go through all the sub packs and make sure that works. Aha! I found the thing that's not working. I knew there'd be something. So the settings music player uses a different element than the ones that are in the music player file that we were editing. The wild update section that we added was not also added here. We'll go and fix that later after I test all of the sound definition. Now comes the part I'd like to call everything else I forgot. So we gotta fix the mistakes that I've made up to this point. For starters, while testing all those little sound definitions, and by the way, all the sound and music definitions do indeed work, so we're good. And I'm just seeing something else now that I gotta write down. You see, it looks like I'll have to update this person who created the sidebar's Twitter handle because they no longer go by killer or underscore. Essentially, 
There is one section in this that I forgot about, and it is the music disc section, because the music disc section needs to have five in it. Considering it was just added in 1.19, it was not in here already, so naturally I forgot about it. Thankfully, it's very, very easy to add because once again, it's just copy the old one, paste in the new names, and it's a done deal. It's a done deal. Look, we're already done. That's why I love the modularity of the music player, and I think it's coded really well. It's still pretty laggy, though. I mean, the one thing I could do is remove the duplicate sidebars, and that would really improve the performance, but I want to try something else. I saw on Twitter, I can't remember where, that you can make a screen cache, so it will remember that it's opened the screen before, and hopefully save the data so it will open quickly in the future. I don't know if this really works or not, but we're going to try adding cache screen to the emote wheel screen, which is where the music player is held. I am also considering just removing the settings music player entirely, because it takes a long time to open the first time you apply the pack, and it's really frustrating when you just want to remove the resource pack. Let's check out the music player screen. So first time we open it, there's three seconds of hang time. Second time we open, still about two seconds, so I don't think that cache screen really did anything. Unfortunately. Yeah, I'll delete that now. It was a good attempt, but sadly it does not work as well as I'd hoped. I'm now considering just removing the sidebar functionality for the buttons that open. There is a duplicate entry in the list every time you open or close the sidebar. This menu that you get from clicking it when it's closed is different from the menu you get from clicking it when it's open. And I think if I just make it so you can't click it when it's open, we could save a lot of trouble. But these are all things to try after we confirm that everything's working correctly in the first place. So let's take a look. Yep, there's five. And let me get out my controller to make sure that the section bottom stuff is working all right. Yes, so see you can't scroll down anymore. And if you try to scroll up, you should go straight to the menu button right there. So it looks like the controller support is working well on that screen at least. Let's try it here. Yep, it's all working correctly. I am going to see what happens if we just simply delete the second section for all of these. It should speed up the menu considerably, and if it does, I'm gonna consider removing it completely. If it doesn't speed up this menu at all, then I'll just leave it there because there's no point in deleting a bunch of functionality if it's actually not helping anything. And I will now immediately undo that, just so we can have it here, but I won't save it. That's how I stop myself from forgetting in the future in case I do need to undo it. I just don't touch it. So let's see if the menu opens any quicker now. It went about two seconds instead of three. Two. One. Two. I don't know. I'm not really sure that's worth it. If it still takes two seconds to open every time, we might as well just leave the extra functionality in there. So there's no point in removing it then. Two. Three. It's three seconds, so it's one second more. One. Two. It's the same on subsequent opens, so there's really no reason to remove the sidebar functionality, even if it would make it run slightly better. On the other hand, I think opening settings will take a while now. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. See, okay, nine seconds is way too long. That's why I'm going to be removing the music player from the settings menu, just completely. It's not even worth having it, because no one wants to use it in the main menu, I don't think. It's unfortunate. It's cool to have it in the main menu. Let's give it a look. Really? Six? Seven? Eight? So now there's no music player button, but it still takes like eight seconds to open. Is that really all the pack information screen's doing? There's no way. This screen is just text. The how to play screen doesn't take that long to open. In fact, the how to play screen takes no time at all. Well, let's try deleting the Music Plus section, too. Okay, now there's no added things in the settings menu at all. It's literally just the default settings menu. Six, seven, eight. Eight seconds. What? Okay, never mind. It's not the music player screen's fault. It's just Bedrock being Bedrock again. That was a wash for everything that we tried to improve performance right there. Instead of wasting our time improving performance, how about we just 
add it to the settings section, the wild update stuff that we need to do. So here it is, nether update section. We're just gonna copy you, paste you, and change nether to wild. We have fixed the music player section in the settings screen. Seven seconds that time, ridiculous. Anyway, here we are. The wild update with Lena Rain and Samuel Aberg is there. Wild update is now in here with firebugs and airy and labyrinthine and five. I guess it's time to update the change log. I'm just going to copy the entire music player change log section from 3.0.0 and we're gonna see how much of this applies to this update. Song tiles now have shadows, no, no. We can change this to five. Okay, actually there's not that much. Added a new section and album for the wild update songs. The music discs album can now play five. I think we're good there. So now it's just time to really get that final stuff in there. We gotta get, well, for starters, let's do all the boring pack stuff. <sighs> Explanation, credits, custom song guide. Ooh, that reminds me. First off, let's just copy this whole part of the change login. It is time to actually update those documents that we just said we updated. For starters, manifest. We gotta update the version. We gotta update the minimum version to 1.19. Now we gotta update the UUID to not conflict with previous versions of Music Plus. I'm also going to update the pack description while we're here to mention the music player because it's actually not really advertised until you pull up the settings menu, so probably should uh, include that. Now I wanna do something very cool. We are going to add descriptions to all of these sub packs. For starters, we could just paste the entire explanation in there actually. So explanation is essentially the document that tells you what plays where and like what exactly has been changed in this update like now i gotta add swamp to this part because they've added a new category of music looks like everything else here is still accurate though so here's how you add a little description to every single sub pack it's kind of secret remember how i told you slash r slash n is new line well if you use slash n which this is a backslash by the way then you get a new line in the sub packs menu so this is how we can add different settings to our sub packs. So if we copy, say, the no automatic music sub pack right after slash n slash n, bam, this will now appear below the name of the pack. We can do the same thing for all of them. Custom music only, copy, slash n slash n, oops, that not slash r, n slash n, paste, boom. Now that is in there as a description, and I'm gonna quickly go through and do all of them. With all the descriptions in place, I'm gonna add one more description that will appear no matter which sub pack is currently selected, and this will give advice for players on what they should choose. Here's what I decided on. The pack option you choose determines the way Minecraft plays ambient songs. The music player will work no matter which option you choose, but the no ambient music option is recommended to avoid overlapping songs. Music discs played in jukeboxes ignore the chosen pack option. They work the same as they do without Music Plus, but with a larger range. I think that should explain pretty well to any player just what they're getting into with the pack option selection. And I also changed no automatic music to no ambient music because it's much clearer what it actually does. No automatic music makes it sound like the music player is going to be playing music automatically or something, while no ambient music makes it very clear, oh, it's the game playing music not me. So let's check out how this screen looks in game with the new descriptions. Well, the pack is not appearing in my global resources screen, so I'm guessing we messed up the JSON somewhere. I guess I'll have to check out JSON lint to see... Aha! Oh, okay, I forgot the slashes. Whenever you do a quote within a quote, in JSON, you're supposed to put a backslash to stop it from seeing the quote and ending the string prematurely. Here, I said the no ambient music option is best and I need to do backslashes before it. That will stop the game from reading it as code. There we are, it's back, better than ever, and with descriptions! So, dimension-based music includes extra songs. Any song from the current dimension can play anywhere. Unused songs from the official soundtracks are added where they fit. The pack option you choose determines the way Minecraft plays ambient songs, blah blah blah, we've already read this before. And now you can see the quotes appear without becoming code. So you can choose it to any setting. And it does move the bar a little, which is annoying, but as long as you're holding it down, you can really move the mouse anywhere, so whatever. No extra songs, this limits music to songs that are in any base version of the game, but otherwise matches the features of the other dimension-based option. This separates music to give unique atmospheres to different places in the world. Water, mountain, cave, swamp, and deep dark music now play only in the relevant locations. Nether music is also split up by biome. 
This is the one I recommend. No Extra Songs limits the music to songs that are in any base version of the game and separates them by location in the same way as the other terrain-based option. This lets any music, including credits, end, boss, nether, water, and mountain, cave, swamp, deep, dark, menu, survival, creative, music disc, custom, and extra music play at any time. This limits overworld music to songs from before the 2013 music update and nether music to songs from before the nether update. This limits all music to songs from before the 2013 music update. It doesn't use creative, water, mountain, cave, swamp, deep, dark, nether, and credits or menu music. This limits the music to festive songs. That's a very simple description. This limits the music to custom songs. If no custom songs have been added, it will be silent requires the custom music container companion pack. This stops music from playing automatically. It's meant for players who want to manually play songs with the music player or commands. Well, I do believe we've got this update feature complete besides just fixing that Twitter handle thing. So I'll fix that and then we can start the custom tab, the most dreaded part of any update. So here is how we fix a Twitter handle. We're going to open all the TXT files, and then we're going to search JSON, and we're going to open all of the JSON files. Now with every single file open, we need to find one where it references the name or the Twitter handle of this person. Here it is, creep at killer art underscore. And we're gonna have to update this to counterbolt at creepies underscore. Replace all in all open documents. Okay, and zero were replaced. Oops, I'm in regex. Make sure you're in extended if you're using weird symbols. There we are, so it turns out we needed to fix the credits, the music player.json, the sidebar navigation screen, and that's it. The first thing we must do is add credit for the people who very kindly submitted language features in this update. So that's going to be netengusng at netengusng and moi at moi. <laughs> Don't ask me. We can delete these two names off our added list because we no longer have any Kumi Tanioka or Lena Rain music included in the pack. And that's the credits updated. We already updated explanation, so really all we gotta do is check and see that the custom song guide is still up to date. It appears the custom song guide is still up to date. We don't need to touch the customizer at all because once again we are not updating custom music container today. Now we've got to pick out an actual name for this update because I don't think secretary is gonna work out. So. How about the wild update? <laughs> no, for real. I'm just gonna say not all the update names have to be winners. It's vaguely relevant to the mangrove swamp and the skulk and the fact that I think the music that I've moved to the wild swamps and forests works better there. So it works. It's kind of got a double meaning, you know, it's fun. It's all I need. So now that the change log is complete, it's time to add it to it, the custom tab. This is always my least favorite part of updating a resource pack, but people tell me on Twitter that they do actually use the custom tab, so I want to keep supporting them. We're going to use that regex trick to control H, find equals dot star, which is finding everything after an equals sign and replacing it with just equals, and we've got to make sure we're in regex. There we go. Now we've cleared the old changelog. Let's paste the new changelog in. Now we got to move these top two lines into the special section up here which never gets deleted. We gotta update some stuff. We gotta add a dimension based music here since that's a section in the changelog now. Command help, we're gonna need a wild update section so I guess I should add that too. Essentially, before each section that's listed here, I'm going to put one of these little equal sign keys so that I'm turning the changelog piece by piece into a translatable identifier which we can call line by line into a UI screen to construct the changelog in-game. It sounds a lot cooler than it is. All right, the changelog is now in here as translation keys, so we're gonna copy it over to the Great Britain version over to British land because nobody in Britain can understand English unless it's in their own British dialect. Isn't that silly? What sad little crumpets. I'm so sorry, British people. Just a few things left to update in this language file related to the custom tab, we updated the credits thanks to the new contributions, which is very nice, so we gotta update the relevant lines of this. And back over in the land of the Brits, we've updated the credits as well. The only thing left is the command list. Now, the command list is difficult because, if you notice, the command list has a lot more entries, and I believe it causes a lot more lag, but I'm not sure. Now it's time to open up the music plus section file and translate all these translations into actual UI code. The fun part. We need a dimension based music section now. We need to not ignore it. We need to deal with our issues head on. In fact, we need to ignore none of these sections. These are all, actually wait. No, there are no notes. 
we added two more lines to the credits, so we need to represent those lines in the actual UI code. The command help is similar. We got to add a new section for the wild update. I think you could have guessed that by now. The universal section of this change log is not visible. Wait, what? Okay, it's not as big a deal as I thought. It's just I replaced a few universals with music player. Oh boy, that could have been a big problem. With three lines in universal, we got to copy that out to three. And I think it's three lines in a lot of these, actually. Okay, I say that. The terrain-based one is four. So that's going to take a whole lot more effort. So for all my complaining about this, you can see it's not that much work when the changelog is small. It's a lot of work when you have something like Java Aspects, where the changelog is 150 lines long regularly, because then you have to do 150 lines of this, and it gets very tedious very quickly. The only one that we actually have to expand after that is pack, which has to go to eight. Let's give nether update section of the command help a little copy and little paste, and then we can do a good old find and replace. Can you tell how much of my job with making an update for Music Plus is just copy, paste, find, replace? It's, it's a lot. It's no, it's not a joke. It is seriously a lot. And then we just got to go to the album section and do the same thing to expand it one. That should be everything already. That seems way too fast for me, personally. I'm sure that Jason is messed up and I'll have to check it through Jason Lint again, but maybe not. Please work, please work, please work. Well, it opened. Does it go down to... Uh-oh, there's no section for the wild update. I knew something would be wrong, but no, the Jason is fine. That's what matters. That's what's really impressive. And then we gotta check the change log after the organic update. Do not update custom music container. Universal 4. That's a little odd. No, this looks good. This actually worked. With minor issues. And look, the credits is formatted correctly. That never happens. So, really all I learned is that there's a few sections messed up in the change log and one missing identifier in the language files. That's not bad at all. Well, if the settings menu would ever load, there we go, I do believe that the Music Plus tab is now finished. That includes the wild update songs, that includes the change log, that includes the credits. So, all that's left for us to do before this update is truly complete, we can zip up Music Plus, because that is actually complete now. And there we are! It's finished. Our job now is to make a quick port to Music Player UI Lite, which is a much smaller simpler pack. There are no sub packs in this pack. There are no various sound definitions or anything. There's just the past this point everything is the same. The texts are incredibly simple because there is no huge change log. Yeah, we're in business. Let's do this update. Let's speed run this update. So music plus, we got to copy the music player file directly. We got to copy emote wheel screen directly. Why is HUD screen in here? Okay, I know what that is. So that HUD screen is just the uh, boss bars. Persona Common? Yeah, we gotta copy that too. Settings screen. Nope, that is separate. Sidebar navigation didn't update. Global variables should be correct already. Yes. And then in settings sections, we just gotta update the music player section. There we are. That's all the UI code updated. We didn't even have to touch it. Can you believe that? Well, here we are. Some number of days later, I've planted about six bushes and three trees since we last spoke. That is not a joke. And now we can finish up Music Plus and Music Player UI Lite. So much for the release date that I put in there, though. I had to go through and update it. I also went through and updated Snowstorm's name and Twitter handle again, previously Counterbolt, because he changed it since the last time. Now what I would like to do is make this name and description of the pack translate automatically. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to make the name pack.name. We're going to make the description pack.description. Now, most fans of Logic would say, you're done here. But if we open Minecraft Bedrock Edition to check, I can confirm to you that indeed, Logic is not Bedrock Edition's strong suit. Because even though our language files in the pack already have a pack name and description in them, including our French and Mexican Spanish translations, well, as you can see here, it doesn't actually put them in the game. So what do you have to do? Well, you have to add an unrelated file. 
This is one of my least favorite quirks about Bedrock Edition resource packs, is when things just don't work without an explanation. We need this file right here called Languages, and all we have to do is copy and paste it into our resource pack here, Music Plus, and then we're going to actually remove the languages that are not covered by this pack. So we only need English, Mexican Spanish, and French, and then we can delete all the others. And now, if we close Bedrock Edition and reopen it, now the game will translate properly because it sees that the languages.json file is here. No, I don't know why that happens, and yes, it is quite annoying. Voila, the pack is back to normal, and now if we switch to, say, France, French, boom, Music Plus is now in French. Or we can switch to Spanish, boom, Music Plus is now in Spanish. I don't know why you have to do that. It only applies for the pack name and description. The rest of everything will translate normally without that file, but... Now that we have that, the pack can be enjoyed in any language as long as you speak one of three languages. Now that we have refinalized Music Plus, we are once again going to add it to an archive. This is pretty much the same effect as naming a project final, as in whenever you create a final MC pack file, you will never actually have it final. Let's see how long this MC pack file lasts before I notice something else that I have to fix. For now, we're going to head back to the music player resource pack and do everything in here. We are going to update the music player UI light completely and then hope that everything's good. Now, naturally, the music plus changelog does not actually completely apply to the music player UI light pack, so we're going to have to remove some stuff. Namely, we're going to have to delete all of the stuff that's not related to the music player up here, because those pack options are just not in music player UI light. We can also delete fixes, because we never include the song files in the music player UI light, and we can delete the descriptions for pack options the pack option change, and the explanation file. That should be everything. Now we just have to update the version numbers because Music Player UI Lite is one revision behind Music Plus, if that makes sense. Now to make things match up, we should update the manifest screen. We're gonna update the version, we're gonna update the minimum engine version, and we're gonna update the UUID. Since Music Player UI Lite doesn't have any pack options, we don't need to worry about adding descriptions to a pack option screen that doesn't exist. Now we gotta update the credits document of Music Player UI Lite to change Snowstorm's name and Twitter handle, and we also gotta add the new translator credits, and that's all. Credits is updated. Custom Song Guy didn't even change in this update, and the customizer also didn't change. Wait, no, the custom song guide did change, apparently, according to the change log. Is this the reason I have to update Music Plus? What actually changed in here? Nothing changed in the custom song guide, so <sighs> this is the reason why we've got to re-delete the MZ pack. It didn't last very long. Delete. Let's not make any more MC pack files, because I feel like we're tempting fate at this point. Instead, we'll just fix that in here. Custom tab, we don't have a custom tab in Music Player UI Lite, and now the rest of the change log is correct. We just need to add those two files from the new textures folder, textures UI, and then we need the wild update cover and the updated caves and cliffs cover, and we'll slap those right in there. And that should be mostly it. Now we, all we gotta do is port the language files over. So the French and Spanish files. And these two, are mostly unchanged. Actually, we can delete the Spanish file because Nettingus sent me a unique file for Music Player UI Lite. That'll save us some time. Put that right in there. Thank you, Nettingus, for sending me two files instead of one. I do appreciate it. Ooh, there's another thing I forgot. The French French needs to have the credits on top for Moy. Let's take a quick look through the Mexican Spanish file and whoops, we need to add credit for Nettingus NG in this file. Say it with me, everybody, because I forgot to do it earlier. Now the rest of the file looks correct. Now France French is slightly different because we just have to change the pack name to match. And for that, I'm going to use deepl.com, which is a very good translation service that is also free. We just need to put music player UI light. So we're just going to call it music player in uh, French, which is going to be good enough. We also have to update the pack description. I have very little faith in any auto translators doing this. See, emoticon menu, but mostly that's correct actually. We just need to fix emote. So the emote is emote. So it's emote with an accent. I only know English and Spanish, but hopefully we can figure out French 
in these moments. I think this is probably good enough. And Moy, if I did mess this up, I'm very sorry. We gotta also fix the pack versions to match Music Plus. Better idea, just delete the pack versions and let the English version take charge. Now we have to update the English files, so all I'm gonna do is highlight literally everything down to the empty, starting at the tabs, copy, and then paste it just like that. Boom, and now we just gotta repeat it with Great Britain. Now we have to update the sound definitions.json to have Aerie in it because that still needs to be here because if you notice, Aerie's not in here and you do in fact need all the sound events to play them in the UI. So we're going to go to Music Plus, Subpacks, any subpack will do because the only part we need to copy is the part where everything is the same. And now we will go to the start of the UI prompts, not Equinox, not magnetic circuit, we need song.custom1.ui. We will select everything down to the end of the document, copy, and then we gotta go to the top, everything to the end of the document, and like that, we have successfully. Oh, and we also don't need silence, because silence is only used for the no ambient music pack option. So we've updated the sound definitions, we've updated the texts, we've updated the textures, we've updated the music player screen and the emote wheels, so we should be home free. All we gotta do now is test the pack in game. Oh wait, nope, I spoke too soon. There is one thing I forgot to add. The languages.json file to make sure that they can actually translate into other languages. Now let's give it a shot. We need to pull out the deactivate music plus, activate music player UI light. We'll leave custom music container on there because it should still be compatible. And now we'll look. We got the wild update button in here. We got all our custom songs in here. I should probably full screen so that the menu doesn't look broken. Let's see here. We have the wild update songs. Good. Now we just gotta check in a world. Open the emote screen. It worked. No emote selected. That's a bit odd. Let's select one just so we can give it a shot. Yep. Emotes are working. Images are working. Sidebar is working. Hopefully this button's working. Yep, it's working because I hear five starting to play, which we need to stop immediately before I listen to the rest of that song. Is five in the music disc screen? It sure is. Is dog in the music disc screen? No. That's good. We don't want the songs that aren't by natively in the game to appear. So for example, volume alpha in this pack is only 14 songs when it has over 20 with music plus because so many songs in volume alpha are unused and not included in the game by default. Let's try playing Airy. Oh, I hear it. It works. And then let's try playing a custom song. Yep, it works. Awesome. I think that's Music Player UI Lite done. We just need to make sure it translates properly now. And also I need to turn down my music before it overlaps with everything else. Hmm, the Spanish pack still shows in English and French still shows in English as well. That's a little odd. Oh, cause I know what I forgot to do. This is why we test things. I forgot to put pack.name and pack.description in the manifest. There we go, it's perfect, right there. And Spanish is working as well. So I do believe that is Music Player UI Lite complete, which means we're done here. So all we gotta do now is update Music Plus and Music Player UI Lite on mcbedrock.com and mcpedl. Right after I run through all the files in Music Player UI Lite to update Snowstorm's name and Twitter handle because guess what I forgot to do. Now, hopefully for real this time, we can select all the files, click Add to Archive, and have it actually stay this time. At least that's the hope. All right, I say that, but <laughs> every time I think of that, there's something else that I should also try. And right now what I should try is the preview. If the pack has errors on the preview, they might not appear on the release version, so I want to make sure that both versions have the packs working perfectly. Good news, everyone. I found a minor spelling error in French that I now must fix and re-fill all the files for both of the packs because of this one minor error. Yet another day has passed since I recorded, so I had to update the release date of this once again, but we're doing it for real this time, 
because all we need to do now is prepare the stuff for updating our web pages on both mcpedl and mcbedrock.com. So here's the most important thing that I'm going to do. It is creating the thumbnail. Now the thumbnail is interesting for Music Plus. It is just a picture of the music player because that's about the only visual thing I can show about a pack that's based on music. What I want to do is load up a world with a mangrove swamp in it, go to that swamp, and then open the music player and take the screenshots in there. Now here's the tricky thing. We have to be able to reproduce how this screenshot looks exactly, because we're going to be splicing together two different screenshots to create the image. I'll explain. Also, why am I in a lush cave? Anyway, I'm using the preview because the preview has locate biome, so we can locate a mangrove swamp. Ah, uh, here we are. Now we just have to actually apply our pack, and since I'm doing this in the preview, we do need to copy our two packs into the preview files so that we can actually, you know, have the most recent version to take a screenshot of. We'll paste it into the finished resource packs folder because I'm done updating them though. We don't need to put them in development resource packs any longer. First, let's do Music Player UI Lite. So here's how we're going to make all the screenshots look the same. We are going to find a determined spot in the world and create a command that always teleports us looking the right direction with the exact same coordinates. So essentially, we are always recreating the exact same look of the screen. So we need to find, why is there no water in this mangrove swamp? Am I crazy? This is the least watery mangrove swamp I've ever seen. Oh my gosh, I've never seen a hilly mangrove swamp. That's actually really cool. Anyway, we don't want the hilly mangrove swamp in the image. We want this little area here because it actually looks like what you'd expect when you see a mangrove swamp. That's perfect. So we need to clear our effects. We need to get everything as static as possible right now. We need to turn off clouds. We need to lock the daytime. We need to click F1 to freeze our screen. And I think that should be it. Oh, and of course, whenever I do a screenshot, I like to set my field of view to 30 because that looks the best on websites. So there we go. We got that little foreground and background. So when we open the music player screen, here it is. And the one thing is, since this is an ultra wide screenshot, the music player is too wide. So we're actually gonna take the screenshot without the music player in frame. So now that we've got our location picked out and our field of view set and everything, we need to create the command to teleport us here. So first we're just gonna do TP add S tilde tilde tilde, and we're gonna see the coordinates it gives us. So we're gonna set up a teleport command that puts us exactly there. 60, oh wait, I have this, they have coordinate copier now, that's very nice. And then we need the direction I'm facing. So we'll go over to this block, break it, get the coordinates, and then we can say facing that block. There we are. So now every time we run this command, we will always look, be looking in exactly the same place. It's static, right? The only thing that's even moving in the frame right now is the seagrass. And as long as none of the seagrass is over the ultra wide cut, people won't notice if the frames are one or two out of sync. So we're gonna take a screenshot, Windows Alt Print Screen. And now we need to switch to 16 by nine. For this, I'm going to go into settings. You can't see that screen because it has my name on it. We're going to go to 2560 by 1440. I sure hope this doesn't screw up the recording. It did in fact screw up the recording, maybe a little? I don't know, we're gonna just go with it and hope it works all right. Now we need to teleport to the same place. There we are. Now we need to open the music player screen. First off, we need to show the albums because this is the best cover image because it has a variety of album covers visible. So we're gonna take a screenshot and then we're going to go to the custom music screen. <sighs> And then I am going to add custom music container to music plus because I have forgotten to add it. I'm going to put our little command into a command block just in case we accidentally have to close the game again because I had to recreate the command after closing the game and that would be annoying to do multiple times. So now this command block, we can just copy from it to get our command to position ourselves perfectly. Now with the music player screen open, we need two screenshots, albums menu, Windows Alt Print Screen, and we need the custom song menu, Windows Alt Print Screen. That's all we need, and now we're gonna just switch the pack to Music Plus and change nothing else and take those same two screenshots. First the album screen, and then the custom screen. And now we just need to retake that ultra wide screenshot since the command has changed just a little bit. Windows Alt Print Screen, done. So why did I just retake that screenshot? Well. I'll show you. Here are our five screenshots. Let's cut them, paste them 
into, I don't know, downloads, sure. And now we just need to edit them together in paint.net. So first off, we've got, here's how you tell the difference between Music Plus and Music Player UI Lite. Music Plus has larger numbers on volumes alpha and volumes beta, and that's it. There used to be a different album cover visible, but now that we've added the wild update album, you actually can't see it. So the only difference is the number. Now we open the ultra wide screenshot as the background, and for the these are only for the cover images that we need the ultra wide screenshot. This will be the cover of Music Plus. So we're going to add it as a new layer, and then we are going to center it perfectly. And we are going to go by the pixels just to make sure it's actually centered correctly. We can't use the pixels on the water because the water is animated, but we can use pixels on things like stuff near the water, kind of like the seagrass here. So we can say, oh, that mud lines up, and then we just bring it all the way down. Boom. That should be aligned perfectly. So now it's like we've got the slim music player from 16 by 9, but it's visible in ultra wide. I am going to set a fixed size of 2560 by 1440. Then we are going to grab exactly this much of the image here. All that we've done really is cropped it so that the music player is no longer in the center. The other thing we have to do is resize the image because the MCP EDL covers are 720 by 340, which is not a 16 by 9 resolution. So first we are going to scale the image down to 340 by, oops, no, I mean 720 by 405. This is the same ratio as 16 by 9. MCP EDL does not use this resolution. It uses 340 by 720. So we need to do this so that it crops it properly so that you can still see the top of the music player. And if you think it looks bad on the bottom, don't worry, we've got something to sort of cover it up because we have this music player cover that we just slap right over it. And we need to make sure to put it on its own layer so that it doesn't accidentally cover up the whole thing. And there we are. That is the MCP EDL cover for Music Plus. Now what we got to do is take these images from our downloads folder and move them into the proper resource pack music folder, but we're going to change their names to actually be what they are. Now our last task is to recreate this pack option selector photo and this pack option photo to show you where to get to that next screen. Now this is another screenshot that was apparently taken in 16 by 9 so I gotta fix my aspect ratio yet again. We can take off preview hider because it's not relevant. So now we just need to click on Music Plus, hover over the gear, and Windows Shift S does a snip. We're going to grab approximately this portion and then we can crop it properly in paint.net. We're going to grab starting at this gray corner. This is how I do all these load order screenshots. Then we're gonna grab right down to where this is a square or about a square. And the last thing that's actually in that image is a little fake mouse pointer. We gotta grab the mouse pointer because the snip option does not grab a mouse pointer for us to put on the image. Since I don't like how small that mouse pointer looks, we're actually gonna resize it using nearest neighbor resizing to four times its original size, and that should be bigger. Yes, so now you can actually see it if you're on a mobile device. So there we are, that's the pack option updated. And then we need to take a screenshot of the new pack option screen, now with descriptions. So how about we do terrain-based music, no extra songs? Or what's the best description here to show off the pack? Probably terrain-based music, right? Because that way you can actually tell what I'm talking about. Once again, just grab a chunk that's about right. So how is the current image cropped? Let's use that as a reference. So it's cropped directly around the black border and then right under the bar that selects, but we did not have descriptions before. So we might have to change how we do things just a little. First order of business, the black border crop. And now we just decide how much description we want in here. So let's leave that as the Music Plus settings screen and then check the previous pack option selector. So yeah, it just shows the bar. And this version just shows the bar and the description. So I think that's a net gain. All the images we need for the websites are complete, so what I can do now is start publishing stuff. So here we are on the MC Bedrock post for Music Plus, and there are a few things we have to update here. Basically all the pack documents are visible on the website, as well as all the pack options and the screenshots of course. So let's update the screenshots first. So the screenshots you have to host somewhere. I host them on Imgur because I think it's probably safe, right? but we only actually need five images total. So all those screenshots created five images for mcbedrock.com. We gotta wait because I have an ad blocker, 
and then these images will slowly upload and we can grab their URLs and put them into MC Bedrock. While we wait for that, let's head on over to Music Plus, grab the change log. Actually, not the change log. The change log requires extra work that I will show later. Let's only copy the lines that actually changed here to save some time. The first line changed because we have to mention the deep dark. All right, the rest of that file is still all true. Under pack options, though, we've got to update these descriptions, and I'm just going to go with all of them. All right, pack options is updated, universal features is updated, so we can close the explanation text document. By now, I think Imgur has probably finished uploading our images. Yes, it says upload complete. So all we're going to do is open each image in its own tab, and all of these we just need to grab the URL from. So this is the music player UI light screen, so we don't need to grab that one. That has its own page. This is the custom song page, and I think, bam, new custom music image. The album screen, we need the new one. Boom, new album screen. Then we need the new pack selector and the new guide to the pack selector. And that should be all the images updated now. So the last thing left is credits and the change log. The change log is significantly harder to do than the credits. And we'll go to that YouTube channel as well because we need to give these people their proper credits for helping me with the pack. And then we need to do the same thing for the French contributor, Moy. Moy doesn't have a YouTube link, so I'm going to assume they don't have one, so I will just put the Twitter link. There, the credits are now officially updated. The last thing for us to fix here is the change log before we actually do the download links. First off, the new update is the organic update, which is 3.2.0. Here's how I do the change log. This is always a fun part. We grab everything after the title, copy it all, and then throw it into Notepad++. First goal is to delete all new lines with a hyphen after, then we're just going to delete all new lines with a hyphen, and then we're finally going to delete all the other new lines. Essentially my goal there is just to get rid of all the hyphens that are not in the text. Now we're going to paste this huge chunk of text right here, and then hit enter after every single line. This may seem painstaking, I don't dispute that. <laughs> The reason that I do this on MC Bedrock first and not MCPEDL, even though it's vastly more popular on MCPEDL, is that I can copy the change log straight from MC Bedrock and it's already formatted when I paste it into MCPEDL. Basically, it saves me from doing this twice. I used to do this twice because I didn't realize I could copy and paste it. And that was the true definition of pain. Now that we've got a whole bulleted list of every change in the update, we're going to hit Shift Tab on the ones that are headings. And we're going to do the opposite on sub ones where it's going to put them out a bit. And now sometimes it messes up lines like this that are right next to each other. So you have to backspace and go again, and then it spaces it properly. All we do now is fix the formatting of the headings. So this is heading one right here, which needs to go up to 14 point font. And we just need to do that same thing for all of them. And yes, this is definitely the least favorite part of mine because you just have to either redo the work or keep scrolling up and down. With that, we've put the new changelog in here, so it's done. The changelog is ready. Now, I'm actually going to recreate the zip file for Music Plus, since I updated the explanation text document a little bit late. So here we have them, the two final files. So here's what we do with the two final files. We go to Mediafire, and then we go to Music Plus, which is my folder for, you guessed it, Java aspects. Gonna upload that new file. And while that is uploading, we're also going to upload into Music Player UI Lite the new Music Player UI Lite file. As we wait for those to upload, we can change the titles of the links to have it ready for the new links once they're here. And since we're still waiting, we can actually open the Music Player UI Lite in its own tab and start to update this page. This page is very similar to Music Plus, so it's almost the exact same process, so I'm not going to show it again. Like I said, it is very easy to update this page because it is already done. And we're still waiting for that file to upload, so what was even the point? Just kidding, now I'm ready to just paste the links in and then we're done. I say done, but that actually means it's time for MCPEDL. Alright, now the files are uploaded properly, so we can copy the links to first Music Plus 3.2.0 and second Music Player UI Lite 2.2.0. And with that, the update is complete, as long as this save works properly. As you can see, we now have the mangrove forest showing, we have the wild update visible in the screenshots, we have the new change log in here, we've got the new links to the updated files, so we're done here. Now we just gotta repeat the process for MCPEDL, which will not take long at all, since again, 
the work is already done. Now once we're on MCP EDL, we're going to hit submission, and this brings up all my resource packs, including the mashup patch, which was denied. First, we're going to do music plus, so we'll click on it, click edit, and now we can see the page as it is, and then we can update it down here. We're going to add a new line here about the translations which were added by Netengus NG and Moy. We're going to make these little highlighted links inside the text so that you can click on the name of Netengus NG and you can click on the name of Moy and you can go straight to their Twitters. It's always good to credit people whenever possible because you want people to work with you in the future. It's just a good idea. Now, you see how this entire universal features section would probably take a while to update? Not so much today, because we have the entire thing here. Now, the Music Plus version is cut down and simplified compared to the one on MC Bedrock, so we can cut a lot of it. We'll grab only the lines that changed, like we did last time, and put them directly, because they're more important. Just like that, we're already done. Pack options. Same thing as before. We can just copy them directly, and they'll already be formatted correctly because these two sites use the same formatting methods. Now we gotta upload our new photos, and MCPEDL does not use Imgur links, which is why I closed those photos, so instead we'll upload directly from my computer. First the pack option, then the one that shows the selector. The music player itself is going to be deleted and replaced with its new image. We're gonna change no automatic music to no ambient music because that actually has changed in this update, and I think I gotta fix that on MC Bedrock 2. Now the custom music part really hasn't changed at all, and we don't have to even change the image because it's just a thumbnail from my video about the process, which is already done. So it's time for file verification. We only have to upload Music Plus here because Music Player UI Lite is covered by a different page that we'll have to edit afterward, and Custom Music Container has not even been updated, so it hasn't changed at all. I do external links so that people download through Mediafire instead of MCPEDL, just because I can see the count and I like that more. So first we'll copy the link of the newest Music Plus, put the link as Download Music Plus, and then we'll add Custom Music Container in there because to keep the links in order you have to delete all of them, which is mildly annoying, but it doesn't take me any extra time at all. Let's change our supported Minecraft versions to only 1.19 because this update literally makes it impossible to open it on 1.18. And now all that's left is updating the cover. This is what we created that weird aspect ratio size image for. That's the new one. And now we just put the new changelog in here, which we can copy directly from mcbedrock.com. And the entire thing, I think except for the part that says universal, will copy correctly. Let's hope. Yeah! See, all the indent formatting is correct, which is the part that matters. Then we just gotta make these little parts heading 2, so that we separate the change log with a appropriately dramatic size difference. Now on MCP EDL, since this site is made for younger people who don't know as much about the game, I delete all this stuff about the technical changes, so we only really keep the important things like updated Snowstorm's name and Twitter handle, or added descriptions, or added translations, that's cool, but we don't keep the stuff about, like, updated pack UUID, because no one understands what that means. I just put all that stuff in there because I like to have literally every change I make in the change log. So let's take one more quick look through this page. Looks good to me. We do have to change creep to snowstorm and update the link, though. Good thing I just read that in the change log. <laughs> Perfect. And with that, we are ready to create the post. As long as everything goes through, Music Plus is officially updated. Done. All right, let's submit Music Player UI Lite as well, and that should be everything done. Music Plus is now pending, and Music Player UI Lite, fingers crossed, is now pending. We're done. We're done. The whole update. You've just seen the whole update process. Well, I guess except for one thing. You gotta see the tweet. There's tweet number one, and tweet number two is basically the same thing, but about Music Player UI Lite. Well, you've officially seen the entire process of making an update for a resource pack. That was a relatively small update compared to some things that I've done in the past, especially Java aspects, but I'd say this was a good experience. I hope you enjoyed watching the entire experience commentated so that you can understand what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, and how I'm doing it kind of like a giant tutorial slash podcast slash boring <laughs> people to death if you don't know what I'm talking about. Thank you if you stuck around through the whole video, but for now, I do want to tell you all, thanks for watching, and I will see you later.